a.m. local time, actually making two landfalls, once across South Padre Island. But as we head into the evening hours and those temperatures drop, you could see a few flakes of snow going into tonight and also for your Monday. You're under a tornado warning. You need to be inside your home in an interior room. Experience, it feels like temperature of 102 to 105 today. And we have rotation and a twist. So that leads for the ingredients to where we could see some of these tornadoes, especially along the Delmarva region, those darker shades of red and orange showing you the heaviest rainfall in hours. This then turns into a severe weather threat on Tuesday into Wednesday for places like Alabama, Georgia, and North Florida. Plan early makes that decision big time. Very simple. Tomorrow should be indoors. You hear thunder? That's your sign. Go inside. Sitting in the upper 50s, near 60 degrees right now. We will see these temperatures drop a little bit more going into tonight. Rain, rain, go away. That's what they're saying out in the desert southwest. And the system will be moving east. So Hey everybody, happy Monday. I hope your day is off to a great start. It was an eventful weekend for many folks, not only across the lower 48, but our friends out in the Aloha State getting a rude awakening yesterday. This was the civil defense siren being sounded after the 8 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center alerted everyone to let them know they were under a hurricane warning as Hurricane Douglas made its dangerously close approach to some of the Hawaiian islands out here. But we began the weekend on a rainy note for some folks in the lower 48. Transitioning now to Lowell, Massachusetts, this video comes to us from the beginning of the weekend where we had some rain causing localized flooding. And while we've had a dry weekend, we'll see the rain come back to the forecast for folks here across the Northeast. And it's all because of a cold front making its way across the middle of the country right now. So over the past 24 hours, this is what it's looked like on satellite radar. You can see that cold front draped from the Great Lakes all the way back through Iowa, some explosive thunderstorms into Nebraska and Kansas overnight, and then the rain trails all the way back to the Four Corners region. You'll also notice what's left of Hannah spinning down there at the bottom of your screen by South Texas. We'll continue to see that moisture rain out over the Rio Grande Valley into your Monday, but not all the rain was bad. We've needed the rain in many places across the U.S. This is our drought monitor map that updates every Thursday, so this is the most recent one. Unfortunately, where we've had the most intense drought, well, we had the most intense rainfall over the weekend. So you see the red and brighter oranges here show severe and extreme drought across parts of Colorado, New Mexico, back out to Oregon and Northern California, and also into parts of Texas. Unfortunately for Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas, that's where we got the most rainfall. Hannah moving on through, we overlay the radar here. You can see so much rain falling with this tropical system, more than 15 inches locally in South Texas. So while we do need the rain, not all at once. So this has been a big, big headache for flooding in South Texas. And then the rain that has fallen across parts of the Four Corners region, very heavy rainfall here in a short amount of time. So when the soil's been so dry, it's very difficult to absorb all that rainfall in a short period of time. Although eventually that will dry out and be beneficial for these areas. Folks who didn't get the rain this weekend, well, we have some help in store for you with this cold front moving across the middle of the country. Here it is on the My Radar forecast. It's going to continue progressing eastward today. We'll start the day off with thunderstorms in the plains, parts of Missouri and Kansas having a couple rumbles of thunder for the start this morning. And along the Gulf Coast, we see some disturbed weather with extra energy left over from the busy weekend. Things quiet across the southeast under high pressure. But as we head into the later morning hours, the afternoon, get that daytime heating, thunderstorms begin to bubble up and especially along this cold front we'll see the thunderstorms trailing along and ahead of it into the evening hours back towards Oklahoma the panhandle of Texas and into the Four Corners region storms lingering into the overnight on Tuesday temperature wise this front will help cool things down a little bit behind it but no relief for today in the Northeast. We see mid to upper 90s for high temperatures here. 98 for the high in Boston, 97 in New York City, 94 in Pittsburgh. But as we head behind that front, back around the Great Lakes region, some 80s for your high temperatures today. Moving down the East Coast line here, it's staying hot. We've got mid to upper 90s for many folks here in the Mid-Atlantic. 98 for Philly, 99 in Richmond, 95 in Charlotte, 90 in Birmingham. But as we head into Florida, rain will keep things a bit cooler there too, sticking near the 90 degree mark. Unfortunately, it's gonna feel very uncomfortable as that humidity builds in today. And back around the Gulf Coast, the humidity sticks around. We're dealing with 80s for the highs today for Mobile, 83 in New Orleans. In the Central South, mid 90s creep back into the map here. So once again, 
feeling like the middle of summer. And as we head into the Four Corners region, things building back in with the heat. We'll see 85 for the high today on Albuquerque, 109 for the high in Phoenix. And as we head out west, we have a hard time staying under the 90 degree mark here. 106 for the high today in Vegas, 92 in Reno, 95 in Salt Lake City. But along the California coastline, that helpful Pacific onshore flow keeping things near 70 degrees for the high temperatures there. Up in the Pacific Northwest, we're staying warm once again. 95 for the high in Spokane, 98 for the high in Boise today. A few places across the mountainous west here could dance with the triple digits for high temperatures today. 99 for the high in Portland, 95 in Bend. And as we move into the northern tier, things a little bit cooler because of that front that's come through. So we'll stick with the 80s, 89 for the high in Rapid City, 81 for the high in Fargo. And if you are not a fan of this heat, well, as we head into August, we have some good news for a couple of folks here. This blue in the middle of the country showing you that over the next six to 10 days, we'll see some below average temperatures for folks in the middle of the country from Missouri into Arkansas, that deeper shade of blue showing the most below temperatures, below average temperatures and into the Northeast and the desert Southwest, the darker shades of orange showing you where we could see the most above average temperatures over the next six to 10 days. So well, the beginning of August, it's gonna be pretty hot for some folks here across the lower 48. You've got your kit, you've got your plan, you're ready for the next storm. But are you ready for what happens after the storm passes? When the winds are calm and the rains have ended, it's time to come back and assess the damage. Hopefully it's minimal, but there are times where you may need to file an insurance claim for damage to your home, your vehicles, or your belongings. Here's what you can do to make that process less stressful. Take a walk around your home, inside and out. You want an inventory of your valuables like jewelry, electronics, and important documents. Take photos and email them to yourself or upload to a secure folder on your preferred cloud storage service like Google Drive, Dropbox, or iCloud. This is also a great time to look for any areas of your property that may need a little TLC before the storm arrives. Make sure to document the condition of your home to show the insurance company it's well maintained. Focus on areas like your fence and your roof. Keep any receipts from recent repairs too. So having photo documentation of all the valuables in your home will make the process of filing a claim that much easier. During a hurricane, power outages are always to be expected. This of course is bad news for the food in your refrigerator. Here's a cool tip to help you figure out if your freezer items have begun to defrost. Grab any transparent container that is freezer safe and has a secure lid. You can use a water bottle, a shaker cup, a mason jar, whatever fits best in your freezer and has a little bit of height to it. Fill it about halfway with water, close the lid tightly, and then lay on its side to freeze. Then once it's frozen, keep it in your freezer right side up. If the power goes out and your frozen items begin to defrost, that vertical column of ice will begin to melt and begin to pool at the base of your container. Even if the power is restored and the water refreezes before you're able to check, any additional ice will be covering the bottom and it'll be a telltale sign that your ice box may have lost its chill.